All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Um, going to uh, now that I've got the amplifier uh, project complete, I'm going to start working on some backlog of uh, some test equipment that I've got for repair, and I figured I'd uh, tackle this one first. So this is a Tektronics um, P5200. It's a high voltage differential probe, and I bought this on eBay for. Uh, pretty pretty cheap. Uh, it was listed as uh, not working for parts. So I'm going to see if we can get this uh, probe working again. So uh, the description was is it uh, doesn't have a power LED. Uh, some of them are listed that the power and the overrange LEDs are lit. This one was listed as having no no indication at all and no signal at the output so let's we'll take a look here at the unit this is the obviously um, the uh, probes or your probe connections would be for uh, whatever you're testing uh, as you can see it looks like it's got a 1300 volt max um, between the two probes the red and the black and then a thousand volts uh, between either the red or the black um, to between those and ground there's a uh, power LED here an overrange LED and there's a push button switch to change the ranges there's a 1300 volt and a 130 volt range and then a little table here that tells you uh, for uh, whichever range you want to use to where to set your scope volts per division so uh, so if you want to see uh, so if you're looking at uh, effective 50 uh, 50 volts per division you would set your scope on the one volts per division uh, setting and then on down depending on uh, what uh, range you wanted to use and it's a uh, output uh, 2.6 volts into a 1 meg ohm so it would go into the 1 meg ohm connection on your oscilloscope not the 50 ohm if you have an oscilloscope with a 50 ohm input you'd want to use the 1 meg ohm input all right looking on the back side uh, it's got a caution we'll see that uh, a power source is uh, 9 volts at 300 milliamps it's a um, center positive uh, connection and that's uh, this connection right here on this, um, this little molded plug so that would go in there, and uh, well, it says no user serviceable parts inside. So we'll see if uh, that's true or not. We'll find out. Uh, what I don't see is an easy way to disassemble this. Uh, so we'll have to figure out how to get the cover apart. I think I've got an idea as to how that's supposed to happen. But uh, anyway, yeah, I didn't come with any accessories. I've got some uh, some of these uh, little cheap uh, plugs that will fit in there. Of course, uh, these are only rated for 30 volts, so you wouldn't want to use them for high voltage. But we can use those for testing. We can put a low voltage signal into the probe and see if we get any output on the scope. Uh, so I don't know if... Uh, I don't know what this is going to do, but I think the first thing I'll do is we'll hook it up to my oscilloscope and I'll get a uh, barrel plug and hook that to a 9 volt uh, DC power supply and see if we get anything, if we get anything at all, whether we get a signal in the oscilloscope or whether we get uh, uh, any indication that this unit is working at all. So we'll go from there. All right, I've got a uh, small cable here attached to this power supply. And we should be putting out about uh, 9 volts. All right, that's good. That's close enough. 9 volts there. And so I'm going to hook this up to uh, this uh, probe here. And let's see, let's see if we get anything on the probe. And I'm going to flip this to amps. See if we get any indication there on the meter. Uh, doesn't look like doesn't look like it's drawing anything or if it is it's drawing 
such a low amount that my ammeter on there can't pick it up. And I don't have any indication on the uh, probe there. You can see the power LED is dark. It doesn't look like it's doing anything. Alright, I'm going to hook it up to the oscilloscope. I'll put it up here on my oscilloscope and see. Down onto the lowest here onto the lowest uh, 10 millivolt scale and don't really see anything at all. It doesn't look like it's responding at all. I'll just turn the power on and off and see if it does anything. A little blip on the oscilloscope there when I turn the power off. I didn't see it that time. It was like a little blip right there. That could just be some kind of a inter um, maybe some interference or something picked up. So I don't see anything on the oscilloscope that looks like um, this is uh, showing any signs of life. So I could take and hook this into current mode and see if we're getting anything on uh, any current at all. This will be more accurate than if than looking at the current meter there on the power supply. All right, so I've got this hooked up here. This will just be more accurate than trying to read any kind of current on there at all. And I've got the power supply still set to nine volts. And it doesn't look like it's showing any, any current draw. So we've got um, no current being drawn by the, the module here. So I'm wondering, I'm kind of thinking, I'm wondering if uh, there's not a problem with the, uh, the power supply inside this unit. Um, but, uh, you know, it could be that, uh, maybe, maybe somebody plugged a power source that was too high, uh, into this, you know, maybe it's whoever had this tech or whatever had this and it plugged the wrong power supply in and maybe blew up the power supply. And I'm sure, cause I'm sure there's, uh, some local regulation, uh, circuits in here. Uh, so that may be something that we could look at, but, uh, maybe that, or it could be that, um, there's a break in this cable somewhere uh, in the power supply line and so it's just not getting uh, the power's not getting into the unit all right so I'll have to figure that out so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this apart and the way it looks like it comes apart is there's there should be four screws there should be one screw in each corner and I can feel them I can feel them under the label there, so I'm pretty confident that's where they are. So I'm going to get my, uh, yeah, so you can kind of push my thumbnail down in there, and I can see that circular uh, indention there. So I know that's where the screws are. So I'm going to get my little X-Acto knife out and see if I can cut those out so we can get those screws out and take the unit apart and have a look inside. All right, got my knife here. You can see, I don't know if you can see that or not, right in there, that sort of round uh, indention there. That's where the screw is. And then, of course, there's one in, in each of the four corners. So that's where the screw is. I'm going to get my uh, knife here and see if we can cut that open. Now, I hate to do this because it's going to be uh, damaging the front label, but... I don't really know of any other way to do it other than to uh, you know, do it this way. I guess we can just kind of see if we can minimize the damage as much as possible. But it's better than tearing the whole label off the top. 
you know, so you don't have all the uh, information there on the top label. Right. Pliers here. And yep, there it is. So I don't know if you can see that down there. Looks like a, uh, yeah. You can see that screw down in there. That's a, looks like a, like a hex, a little, uh, like a star bit type screw. So I'm going to, I'm going to do the same thing for these other four corners here. And then, uh, when we get back, we'll have a we'll take the cover off and look at the, uh, the inside of this module. All right. Got all four of the holes cut away. And it looks like it's a Torx, uh, looks like it's a Torx, it's a T8 Torx what it is so we'll take these screws out so one way I guess to know if you Got a product that's got all the guts inside. Is uh, if none of these cut away, probably got all the parts still. Nobody's taking any parts out of it, or nobody's tried to do any repairs on it. Uh, it's pretty obvious when you take this thing apart that somebody's been in here. So, it's like still got that one right there. So here is our module. Put these screws off to the side. All right, here's our module. It looks like uh, it's all it's all surface mount uh, components. Most mostly service mount components. We got uh, you know a couple of through holes stuff. We got some uh, trimmer resistors here. We got a couple of other adjustments here. Looks like an adjustment for the 50x offset. There's a 500x offset. There's a 500x uh, gain. Uh, this is a DC CMRR adjustment. And this is a 50x gain. And then, uh, let's see, I imagine these probably have to do with probe compensation for, uh, because this is supposed to be good for, um, I think it's good for, I think maybe 25 megahertz. I have to double check the, um, the manual there, but it's, it's good, it's good up for certain higher frequencies, um, you know, well above what your normal AC 60 hertz or uh, 50 hertz or 120 hertz would be. Uh, so this, these adjustments up here would be for uh, compensation for the probe. And uh, there's a couple of, looks like some unpopulated components here. This says S460 bandwidth limit and S260 is a buzzer on off. So I'm, I'm guessing that uh, Tech probably uses this uh, box for more than uh, one line of uh, this type of probe. So maybe, maybe some of the other probes, and, and I think now that I remember looking back, some of the other probes uh, have some different um, uh, some different options. I think one does have a buzzer. So I guess uh, this board would be used for more than one different uh, probe. But uh, this looks like it's just going to come out of here like that. So that's going to make that easy. So I can put, uh, and I guess this, yeah. So this is uh, some kind of uh, shielding, uh, signal shielding uh, there on the inside of that case. All right, let's check some voltages here first thing. Oh, 
It would help if I plugged in the... So now I've got it plugged into the power supply. Let's check and see if we've got 9 volts going into the board. All right, so we've got 9 volts. So we know that, um, at least we know the cable is working there for the uh, power supply section. So it looks like from the trace here on the board, the first thing that this um, white lead, which has the, uh, this is the white lead is the positive lead for the power supply, goes through a rectifier. This says CR7. So let's see if we got anything going through CR7. All right, nothing on that side. All right, we've got nine volts on that side. And we have no voltage on the other side of CR7. So I wonder if our uh, rectifier there at CR7 is, uh, has failed and it looks like it looks like the top of it is yep it normally does indeed I'll see if I can get that up on the camera and show you here all right so check this out so I've got the board here under this uh, this little um, little video microscope here so this is CR7 and this is what I'm talking about here look at this big canyon so that diode there has obviously uh, failed for whatever reason. Um, you know, if somebody put too high a voltage through the um, the input to the power supply, although I, I would think it would take quite a bit of uh, voltage. So they must have put a really, uh, really the wrong plug into the power supply to make that happen. But that, as you can see, you know, this white... Uh, this white lead right here, the plus nine volt supply, that's the first thing it goes through is that CR7. If we replace that rectifier, that uh, this thing might come back to life. Don't know, there's a, the next thing that connects to is a jumper there. And then it looks like it goes to the input of this uh, IC here, which is U18. And uh, it also goes down to, uh, where does that go to? That goes to the plus 15 volt test point right there through a, a 10 ohm resistor. And then it's going to go up on into uh, some of the power supply. It looks like it goes to that, to, that's the LM317 uh, IC. So I'm going to get that uh, rectifier CR7 swapped out and see if we can put some, get this thing working again. All right, I've pulled off the bad rectifier or the bad diode, I guess uh, it could be the one, as you can see right there, that's been pulled off and cleaned the pads up uh, with some um, uh, lacquer thinner there just to get the uh, flux residue off. And unfortunately, I don't know what the original device was uh, I can only try to guess. It's obviously a, a diode of some sort. It's labeled CR7, but I don't know what they used. Now, I can see what I've got in my um, in my bin here for uh, surface mount diodes. Let's see, these are uh, 1 in 4148s diodes. I think uh, yeah, let's put uh, let's put that in there. You can't get you can't get any more generic than a four one four eight diode. All right, got the new diode in, and uh, let's see if it's uh, see if it's gonna let's see if it's gonna work for us. It's gonna come back to life. Do a quick test. Make sure that uh, I always do this. Um, I always do this whenever I'm working with solid state. Make sure, or I mean, not solid state. Whenever I'm working with um, surface mount stuff, just to make sure we got good good connections there. So we'll put a uh, we'll do a diode check across this diode here. We should get a 
forward die drop. Yep, so there's our forward die drop. Uh, so that's good. And we're not got anything down the drain, so that's good. So we know that, uh, you know, if I can check it from this point and this point, that uh, we got a good, um, a good connection on the board there. All right. So let's power this up and see if it does anything this time. All right, we got the uh, power supply plugged in, and we're gonna turn it on. And don't see any LEDs on the front. No current there. Let's see if we got any voltage on the, on the uh, here or the. All right, so we've got uh, now we've got voltage at least. Let me put that down here so you can see that. So I'm going to check voltage across the at the uh, at the at the plus the one that's labeled plus 15 volts, and we're showing uh, 8.49 volts, and the one at the negative. It's labeled negative 15 volts. It's still showing uh, negative 15 volt, or still showing zero. So we're not showing anything. Well, we're showing more than we were showing before, but we still don't have the, our good indications. So what we need to do now is figure out what could have happened here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, see if I can take a look at this circuit and figure out what's going on here. Obviously, it's some kind of uh, switching circuit. Here, we've got an inductor here, and, uh, some kind of uh, integrated circuit here, and some components. So there's some kind of switching circuit going on here. I'm going to see if I can figure out what that, that device is right there. So I've done a little digging around on the Internet, and here's what I've come up with for uh, this probe manual. So... This power supply here, uh, this first section here, uh, and this, this lower section is a switching power supply, and it is uh, built up around an LT1616, which is a, a, a switching regulator IC. It's in a um, SOT23-6 uh, package. And here's the schematic. I traced out the schematic there. Uh, using the um, just following the traces and doing some continuity checks to see what connected to where and here's what I've got so far and what I found is that um, you know this is the uh, the positive input voltage from the uh, the plus nine volts coming in uh, off of the uh, that the uh, cathode of the CR7 that we changed out earlier and it goes through a zero ohm uh, resistor and then it goes to pins four and five, which are the um, uh, the shutdown and the voltage input pin on this IC. And of course, the shutdown is active low, so being tied to the uh, positive rail, it's going to always be on. And uh, then the output, uh, which is pin six, the or the the switching uh, output here, pin six, is right here, goes through a rectifier and an inductor. And then it goes through another inductor and to the output. And so it looks like, uh, because if, you know, I've got this drawn right, uh, yep, so the band end goes in there. So I, it, looks like, it looks like they're maybe using this to uh, generate a, um, a negative voltage. Uh, let's see. I'll have to check and see. Maybe I don't have that drawn right. But anyway, uh, so, uh, but what I figured, what I found out is that uh, this, uh, the, we have a voltage going in here about uh, 8 volts, 8.4 volts after the diode drop there. And we're getting nothing at the output of the uh, switching regulator. Now, the other uh, supply, which is. A uh, this off this LM three one seven, 
Uh, again, it comes in from the cathode of CR7 and goes around this bottom trace here into these three resistors. And there are three um, 10 ohm resistors in series there. And there's a capacitor filter, and then it goes through the input. And there's there's two resistors in parallel here, and these are uh, 500, I believe they're 560. The, the case code is, is uh, five, uh, the case code is five, six, uh, two, zero, which I believe uh, that might be 5.62 kilo ohms. I'll double check that. But uh, anyway, they're in, in parallel across the, uh, across the output there. And then there's uh, two smaller resistors here, which do the feedback um, for the adjustable the adjust pin here, and then there's an output here. Now, uh, again, checking the voltages, and I've got it uh, powered up right now, so we'll just take some voltage readings here first off of the uh, output of this uh, low voltage regulator, and you see we get about uh, one point uh, or. 0.134 volts, so not very much. Not, and I, I, I think that uh, I'm thinking the problem might be one of these resistors because we're getting I'm getting a, a high drop across that resistor right there. So either either there's something wrong with this IC and it's uh, drawing a, a, a an excessive amount of current and causing the uh, this resistor to drop. Uh, a high uh, voltage but it doesn't feel warm so I'm wondering if maybe this resistor might be open so I'll have to check that but uh, the output of the other s the switching supply uh, is nothing there's no output on the switching supply as you can see uh, there's the the input there to it and the output which is here is nothing so Obviously, whatever took out this CR7 also took out this, uh, this this regulator right here. This, so I'm gonna have to see if I can find a replacement part for that. Uh, get the get the hot air gun out um, to go ahead and take uh, the two components. So I removed two of these uh, 10 ohm resistors here that uh, that were bad, and went ahead and took the LM. Uh, uh, 317 off of the board there and I also removed the uh, the switching regulator the LT uh, 1616 so we'll take a look at this uh, this LM uh, this, this is the LM uh, 317 and we'll go ahead and put get this on so what we can see here so I'm going to take a just a reading across across from the input to the output terminal of this uh, LM317 that uh, is a dead short across this um, this LM317 here. This is from the input pin to the output pin and we see that we got uh, 1.9 ohms so that's that's a dead short so th this regulator is not any good anymore and of course that's across all four of the uh, output pins this is the way this this pin this pin one is the input and then pins two three and um six and seven are all four configured as output pins uh pins five and eight are not connected anyway this this one's this thing's toast uh you know, you know dead short across the input to output so that that'll have to be replaced i've got the uh two of those 10 ohm resistors here and they're also showing uh, not anywhere near. So the, the, the number code on the resistor, uh, this is one of the resistors, you can't even see that on the camera, but uh, anyway, the, the number code on the resistor is 10R0, so that should be 10 ohms. And uh, if we just go across it with the ohmmeter here, see that... Uh, I'll do this one since I'm in the bottom here. Um, you know, that's reading 24 megs. Uh, this one here is uh, it's 
not reading anything. So these two resistors are toast. Now the other one, the one that's left on the board is reading uh, about 12.7 ohms. So it's, I don't know what the spec is, but it's, it's, I'll probably end up uh, replacing all three of them. Uh, these look like um, uh, probably 12, uh, 1206 size uh, resistors, so I'll just replace all three of them with new ones. These two resistors here are good. These are uh, 500, I believe these are uh, 562 ohm resistors. Of course, there's two in parallel, so there's going to be a, the in parallel resistance about 280 ohms. That looks about right for two 562s in parallel, 562 ohm resistors in parallel. Now, the um, the other IC, this, uh, this uh, LT1616, uh, I uh, took that one off also because it was it was toast. So we've got uh, you know we've got a whole pile of parts here uh, from this uh, uh, from this probe. You know we got a, a regular IC, two resistors, uh, of course our diode and the uh, switching radiator. So I have to get all those parts replaced. So unfortunately I don't have any of these parts on hand, so I'll have to order some parts. But uh, when they do come in. We will continue this and put new parts on the board and see if we can get some life. Unfortunately, uh, it wasn't as simple as just the uh, rectifier there. All right, so I've gone ahead and uh, cleaned up the um, the pads here. Uh, a little bit here is for our um, LM317. And I went ahead and took off the last of the three resistors there. That's a 10 ohm resistor that was reading about 13 ohms and cleaned up the pads for our, um, this is that uh, SOT23 uh, switching regulator package here. And I got some, kind of did some uh, looking around on the internet and whatnot uh, while I was waiting on parts to arrive. And I figured out that um, I think this board is actually used in the uh, Tektronix um, P5200, which is what this, um, probe is but it actually is also used in the in the uh, tech p5205 probe which has a little bit uh some some different there's some differences to it i didn't look at the specifics but it's used in two different probes and uh in that probe there's uh different power supply configuration so that's why and there's some other features too associated with that probe. So that's why uh there's some uh components here that are not populated um and then also these uh, labels here are used for that probe. So this uh, negative 15 and positive 15 blue and black here are used to, for the uh, power supply going into that probe. So we'll look at uh, what uh, I figured out here about this probe. Uh, first off, um, did some digging and to see what the other components are here. First, uh, uh, I see here, this is a max... Um, it's a Max 436. It's a wideband trans transconductance amplifier. Um, it's going to handle the front end of uh, this probe here. There is an IC up here. This is a DG444, which is a quad uh, SPST CMOS switch. So most likely handling... Uh, uh, some uh, switching probably for the ranges on the probe. We've got a, this, I don't have the data sheet for this one, but this is a uh, OPA698. It's a, a wideband uh, unity uh, gain um, uh, uh, amplifier, uh, op operational amplifier. And it looks to me uh, with this position here is probably taking the signal and driving the cable uh, going back to the oscilloscope. This, uh, as far as I can tell, is a, is a quad uh, compared. It looks like an uh, uh, LM339. I don't uh, really know what its function is. And then we've got our power supply section down here, and we talked about that earlier. Our uh, one uh, IC here, which was our in our SOT uh, 23 uh, six-pin package, was an LT1616, and this is a 
uh, step down switching regulator. And I went ahead and looked at the schematic again after I removed the uh, the component from the board, did some more tracing. This is the schematic that I came up with for that uh, power supply. It looks to me that uh, it is laid out in a uh, negative uh, voltage regulating scheme. So this is going to uh, take our uh, positive input voltage and uh, uh, switch it to a, um, a negative a lower negative voltage. Now I don't know what that is, uh, so I have to put the uh, new component in to see what it is. I uh, just, um, you know, it seems like it would probably uh, uh, just, uh, you know, if I had to guess, I would probably say it's generating a negative five volts. Um, and then, uh, of course, our positive uh, voltage being regulated here by the LM317. Uh, would be generating a plus five. So we, our power supply will be generating a, a positive and a negative five volts. But anyway, so what I'm going to do is I've got uh, components here. This is our uh, this is our LT1616. Uh, got uh, three of those there, and I had to uh, get those off of eBay because um, my usual I usually get a lot of parts from Mauser, and these were. Uh, not in stock. They they were available, but they just didn't have any stock. So I think they still carry this part. And then I've got um, some replacement uh, 10 ohm uh, 1206 sized resistors there. And then these are our LM317 adjustable uh, voltage regulators there. And these are in the SOIC8 pin packages there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put our new components on here, the resistors, and we'll put the new uh, switching regulator in here and see if we can get the power supply section to come back to life. New parts are in. There is our uh, switching regulator there, the um, LT1616, and we've got our new uh, regulator here, this is our LM317 in, and we've got three new uh, 10 ohm resistors there put in. So now uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we will power this board up and see what happens. All right, I got my uh, power supply set here and you can't see it off camera, but I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in and we'll see what happens. All right, first thing I see is we got a, um, this green LED is lit now, and that is the power LED, so that's a good indication here. I'm going to uh, take some readings here. I'll get the voltmeter set up. Here, we'll put the meter there and check the output of our power supply here. All right, so our linear, our positive supply is still showing a low voltage, so we'll need to look at that. And our negative supply is showing a negative voltage, negative 2.4 volts. I would have expected that to be higher, but uh, let's see. So this is low. I'm going to see if, yeah, these resistors here are, very warm and I'm gonna to flip to on my case my power supply is supplying almost half an amp of current right now so there's something going on here with this uh, supply this unit still it's still showing voltage is low yeah this feels quite warm so there must be there's clearly something else going on there's clearly another problem somewhere on this board here. So I know that uh, when I power the, um, the board up here from my power supply, that it immediately goes into current limiting. So I have the current limit on the power supply set for about 350 milliamps. And when we power it through the, um, the connector here to for the nine volts DC, the power supply immediately goes into uh, a, uh, a current limiting condition. So it's limiting the, the supply at 300 milliamps. And the voltage, of course, drops out 
to a low voltage value. So that tells me that something on this board is drawing uh, an excessive amount of current. So we've got a short somewhere on this board. Now, like I said, I checked all of the the power supply decoupling caps. They all checked out good. Uh, none of them were shorted. So the next thing is to suspect is that probably uh, whatever caused the power supply to fail initially, but, uh, it must have uh, been some sort of really catastrophic uh, overload condition because it, it looks like whatever the over voltage that was applied to the, to the uh, power pin here uh, simply went through the regulators uh, and then uh, carried down to the um, down to the lo the regulated port uh, regulated uh, power supply rails. So, um, had to figure out what the best course of action is for troubleshooting, and I think what I'm going to do. So I looked on these uh, data sheets for these ICs, and uh, this LM. Uh, 339 quad comparator has a pretty uh, wide uh, supply range. I think it's um somewhere it's like plus or minus uh, 20 volts. So I think up to like a 40 volt difference between the, the positive and negative rails. So that's got a pretty uh, substantial voltage rating. And this quad uh, SPST switch I see also has a pretty wide uh, operating voltage range. I think it's plus or minus 18 volts. But these two parts here, this is a this is a OPA 698 uh, op amp, and this is a Max uh, 436 uh, wide range op amp. And both of these have very narrow uh, voltage uh, requirements. So we're talking plus or minus uh, 5.25 volts each. So the maximum voltage uh, rail would be at a minus uh, uh, or a, a positive uh, 5.25 and a negative 5.25 volts. Uh, the data sheet specifies a team 4.75 and 5.25 volts voltage range for the operation of these parts here. And that's the same for both the OPA uh, 698 and the MAX uh, 436. So I think uh, it, to make logical sense here, looking for a faulty component, uh, probably going to try removing these ICs first. All right, so as it turns out, uh, as you can see here, we've removed the, um, the OPA698 and also removed the MAX436. Uh, and I also removed the quad SP uh, ST switch here. This is a, a DG444 uh, DY plus, I think was the uh, part number there. And uh, it turns out that this uh, quad SP ST uh, chip was the faulty chip. I removed, uh, I did it off camera, but I removed, the, uh, removed it one at a time and checking the power supply. And when I removed this third chip here is when our uh, our short condition cleared. So it seems like at least that part is faulty. Now, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the other chips in and see if uh, any of those chips present a problem. Some voltage readings to see what our power supply is uh, showing for the outputs. All right, you all can see that I've got the camera set up there. Uh, looking at the voltmeter, I'm gonna go ahead and plug this unit in now. And I'll just bring this up to the camera. As you can see here, we've got our green LED is lit now. And I'm going to take uh, some voltage readings here uh, on the power supply. Now the, my, my bench supply is only showing a current draw of about 50 milliamps now. So well below the 300 milliamps that was prescribed uh, by the power supply pack here. So we'll take a reading at the uh, positive rail first, and we see that the uh, positive rail is showing about uh, six volts, so a little bit high. We'll check the negative rail now, and we see the negative rail is a negative uh, 5.42, almost 5.43 volts. So again, um, a little bit high also, but 
Uh, keep in mind too that we've got three of the four uh, ICs removed from the circuit now. So not a whole lot of load on the power supply right now either. So once we put those circuits back in, uh, we may see that voltage come down just a little bit. Got our parts back in. Well, almost all our parts back in. We've got the, um, I went ahead and put the uh, Max uh, 436 and the OPA uh, 698 up and back in. As you can see there, and uh, got those back in cleaned up. And we've still got our green LEDs. We're hooked up here, and we're seeing it's just about just over 125 milliamps there on the power supply, and putting in nine volts. So that's good. And the last thing we got to do is put that uh, quad SPST IC in, and I think I've got that part right here. So here's our replacement part. It's a um, DG444DY uh, quad uh, SPST switch. And it was kind of expensive, $6, $6 for one IC. And uh, so I think these are uh, getting out of production. Right, let's take a look at the work here. We've got uh, our chips back in now. There's our um, Here's our Max 436, it's in there. Our quad, our new quad, uh, DG444 chip has been uh, put in there. And I got, got that re-soldered in. And then our uh, op amp, there are, um, it's our OPA 698, and that's back in too. And still got a little bit of clean in there, just a little bit of flux uh, still hanging around on the board. We will uh, clean that up, but, um, I'd like to go ahead and get some testing done. So let's plug this up into the power supply. All right, we've got it powered up now uh, from the power supply and showing a current draw of just about 150 milliamps on the power supply. We'll take a reading, take a voltage reading first off of the uh, positive voltage supply rail is showing uh, Four and a half volts okay and off of our negative supply rail we're showing a negative uh, 5.39 volts so everything looks good we have good current draw uh, just doing a field test with my fingers on the power supply components I don't feel anything that feels abnormally warm unlike before where we had some the components were getting really warm, uh, really hot to, to, to touch there. So no indications there of uh, any short. All right, so let's take a look at this uh, probe here. I've got it uh, hooked up to an oscilloscope and a signal gen. Uh, we can do some uh, measurements, measurements on it to see how it's working. Now I know the, um, the uh, user manual has a procedure in there for doing um, uh, accuracy checks uh, however I'm not going to uh, do that because I don't have uh, all of the equipment that I need to do that procedure um, but uh, I'm gonna do this to uh, this base this is essentially doing the same thing and this is uh, just simply a, a, a copy of what's listed on the front panel of the probe so there's a, a table here on the um, front of the probe, and that's what I've copied down onto this sheet of paper here just to make it easier uh, without having to flip the cover up and down. Uh, and what this is telling here is when you set your oscilloscope to a particular volts per division, uh, the effective volts per division is this and that's based on whether you're in the 500x or the 50x range on the probe so if you set your oscilloscope to a one volt per division uh, and you're in the 500x range on the probe then one volt or one division on your oscilloscope equals 500 volts of actual uh, measured voltage on the input to the probe if you set your uh, probe to 50x then and you're on one volts per division then your 
then your effectively oscilloscope is showing you 50 volts per division. Uh, for 25 volts on the 500x range, we need to set our oscilloscope to 50 volt, 50 millivolts per division, and that's what I've got here is uh, 50 millivolts per division. And looking at the probe coming in here to channel one. So I'm going to uh, turn this uh, output on a square wave and we're gonna get a frequency of one kilohertz and an amplitude of 25 volts uh, peak to peak. And we see on the oscilloscope now that uh, and that's what we're seeing here. So we're putting 25 volts peak to peak signal in to the probe through the probe jacks there and on a 50 millivolts scale, which is effectively a uh, 25 volts per division. And we see that uh, the oscilloscope, uh, the trace here is uh, half of a division. So each of these uh, divisions is 25 effective volts. And we're seeing that the signal there is uh, about 12 and a half to 12 and a half. So that's 25 volts uh, per division there and we can go to and that's on the um, 500x scale so if I go into the 50x scale now we see that uh, this um, range has changed uh, because now we're looking at uh, 2.5 volts uh, per division so what I need to do is I need to go up to 25 volts per division. I need to go to the 500 millivolts per division on the oscilloscope. So we'll change the range up to 500 millivolts per division. And now we see that uh, we're back here in the same. So we got 12 and a half, 12 and a half is 25 volts. So that appears to be working good. And then we can go up to the uh, maximum range on my signal gym. We'll just go to, for even math's sake, we'll go to 40 uh, volts. So uh, 40 volts peak to peak on the square wave. And uh, on the same scale, so now remember we're uh, 25 volts per division. So uh, we're one tick above the 25 so 25 will be here so this would be at 20 and uh, 25 will be here so 20 and so we see we're at 40 volts uh, peak to peak and if we go back to the uh, 500x scale see that uh, the signal is dropped off but we have to change the voltage uh, scale the volts per division scale on our oscilloscope back to um, for uh, 50 volts we need to be uh, on the, oh well, we were doing 25, so we move back to the 50 millivolts per division, which is where we are here. And you see, again, we're at the same there at 40. So each box is 25 volts and 25 volts, and we take five from the top, five from the bottom, and we're at uh, 40 volts per division. So that seems to be working uh, just fine. Now, one thing I did notice, uh, note that uh, when uh, I turn first got this unit hooked up is and I'll go ahead and turn this off and we see that um, you know right now this trace is resting at the zero line and we're not uh, uh, well you see they're coupling we're coupling DC so we're not on AC coupling but what I noticed when I first connected it is the trace was not at zero I had some offset and the way to fix that is there's offset adjustments in uh, this unit here. There's an offset adjustment for the uh, 500X and there's an offset adjustment for the 50X. And I had to make some adjustments to those uh, potentiometers. I'll just adjust that offset there so that we're off um, there. And so this is what I'm talking about here. So I'll, I'll make this adjustment here uh, on the, uh, on the, uh, uh, on the, on the, uh, so on the 100 millivolts, so we'll make an adjustment to bring that up to the uh, zero point on the oscilloscope there. And then you'll notice that as we uh, downscale, 
it's going to shift down a little bit see so just keep adjusting making that adjustment at off scale or that offset adjustment on the lower ranges until they all uh, until you get to you know until they're all on the zero line and then as you bring it back up you'll notice that uh, it's still zeroed so that's just something to uh, keep in the back of your mind so if you make if you need to make adjustments on the offset uh, you'll want to do it you want to uh, I can continue adjusting that offset to zero as you scale to smaller and smaller scales uh, and then once you get that set uh, it, sh it should be uh, it should be good there for your offset and you can do that for both ranges and uh, the reason we'll talk about that in a minute but uh, the reason that offset needed to be adjusted is because we changed out this uh, IC here this this quad SPST switch and this this IC switches the offset adjustment here between 50x and and 500x depending on uh, which range you're using with your range switch there uh, so since we changed this uh, there was uh, definitely some uh, changes to the internal resistance of the switches and so we needed to make that adjustment with uh, the offset adjustment pots there so like I mentioned uh, earlier uh, so when I was doing the uh, troubleshooting I went ahead and came up with a schematic for this unit and we'll just go uh, sort of quickly through it here and look, um, you know, at the, at the front end, we've got some attenuation from our uh, red and black leads there. And then there's a uh, compensation. Uh, f uh, there's adjustable capacitors here that uh, are for frequency compensation. Uh, there's a CM CMRR uh, adjustment here that uh, that's the... Uh, big uh, potentiometer, the big uh, blue potentiometer on the board, and that uh, sets the balance uh, between the inputs for our uh, wideband amp, which is a max uh, 436. Our switch, our range switch here, talked about that, and that's going to, uh, depending on, uh, depending on whether you're in the 50x or 5x, uh, will change the, uh, operate this uh, quad switch. And the funny thing about this this quad switch is it's it's reverse logic. So, for the uh, DG444, a low uh, input signal here uh, on the control line puts a uh, will activate the switch uh, at, to a high signal. So when the control line is low, the switch will close, and when the control line is high, uh, the switch will open. And that's what this quad uh, SPST switch is They're actually only using three. Uh, switch elements here. One of the elements is not connected, um, and that's what selects the uh, offset adjustment. So we got the 500x offset adjustment and the 50x offset adjustment there, uh, so that when the switch is pressed, uh, you're putting a, a high signal on this line here, and the high signal will cause this switch to open. So that will disconnect your uh, 500x. Uh, offset adjustment and it will apply a high signal here which will cause uh, this switch to go open uh, which will make a low signal present here because this line is pulled to ground through a pull down resistor and a low signal here will cause this switch to go closed which will connect your 50x offset adjustment and we know that when the switch is down you're in the um, 50x position and then of course when the switch is up you get the reverse uh, the, the reverse happening here. So this line becomes low because it's got a pull down resistor here, which causes this low signal here to close the switch to connect the 500x offset adjustment. And the um, low switch, low signal here closes this switch, which will put a high on this line here, causing this switch to go open. So that's the kind of used uh, a, an extra switch here to handle uh, reversing the logic so that they really just have like a, it's really almost like a toggle switch here for the offset adjustment pots. Uh, there's also uh, separate gain adjustments. So there's a 50x gain, uh, which is switched in here uh, by the switch. It's a it's a dual uh, a dual push button switch. So when the switch is in pressed into the 50x position, it will um, uh, connect this 50x gain adjustment in here. 
Uh, otherwise, all you have is a 500x gain here, which is on the output of your uh, Max 436. That signal goes to a uh, OPA698 op amp, which uh, is uh, configured uh, to uh, limit the high and the low uh, signal here. And the way they've done that is through a resistor divider network. So uh, there's 10 ohm resistors here on the power rail, uh, and then there's a resistor divider here on the high and the low limits for the op amp to limit the, um, I believe that limits the uh, output range of the op amp. And that's just to provide us a signal to our coax. So uh, this amplifier here is taking the signal from our uh, Max 436, and then it's using, uh, it's driving the output to our coax. Uh, now, uh, there's also a uh, tap off the output here. Uh, there's a, a little bit of feedback going back to our op amp. And then, of course, this um, uh, line here, the uh, inverting pin for the OPA uh, 698 is what you used to handle the offset adjustments uh, that we talked about a minute ago. Uh, this line also goes to a quad comparator. Uh, is a LM339 uh, uh, DT quad comparator. They're using uh, three of the four elements. One of the elements is is just uh, simply connected here, uh, not uh, doing any uh, useful function here. Uh, just uh, terminated basically to keep it from oscillating. Um, but uh, and what it's doing is it's taking a uh, sample of the uh, output signal here, and it goes through. Uh, looks like a uh, bi-directional uh, comparator. So there's a um, uh, that is compared uh, the inverting and the non-inverting pins against uh, a reference voltage of the opposite polarity. So the, those comparators will then uh, give you the ability to monitor a, a overload condition on the um, positive or the negative swing of your output signal. And then th that uh, those signals are then summed into a third comparator, which is used to drive the overload indicator. So it's pretty uh, simple uh, layout here, uh, pretty pretty simple schematic. Like I said, most of the um, sort of, uh, the I guess what you could say would be the magic in uh, the probe would be in the front end, uh, the compensation uh, network here to get um, you to have a, a constant uh, uh, amplitude response for the frequency range and I believe the range of this probe is DC to uh, 25 megahertz and so that um, would be done here in the uh, front end here with the compensation network and uh, then through your um, uh, the, the uh, max uh, 4, 436 wideband amp which uh, has uh, set up for the various gains uh, here. So again, some of your gain network in here is doing some of that uh, to main to give you a constant uh, or a, um, a essentially a flat response over the entire uh, usable range of the probe. I did not draw the uh, power supplies in here. Uh, we kind of looked at those earlier in the uh, video. Nothing real fancy. Uh, like I said, the, the positive supply is just an LM317 set for about uh, 5 volts. And the negative supply is a um, negative voltage uh, switching uh, regulator circuit uh, comprised around the uh, LT1616. And that's producing about a negative 5 volt signal. So then we have our uh, dual uh, plus and uh, minus supply voltages. All right, so this is going to conclude this video. Um, Turns out this was a successful repair. I uh, hope that uh, you know can find a good use for this uh, this equipment uh, in uh, future videos, future troubleshooting repair type videos. I've still got uh, a few pieces of equipment on, uh, that are on the backlog to get repaired, so we'll be looking for those videos to come up in the future. I uh, hope you were able to uh, learn something, take something away from this video. Just going through. Uh, a piece of equipment that's not working and looking at the symptoms and trying to diagnose and determine what the problem is. And it turns out that uh, we were able to uh, get this uh, this probe up and running. So uh, that's going to be it for this video. 
uh, if you ha have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to uh, leave those uh, comments in the uh, comment section, and I will try to get back to uh, your uh, your your comments as soon as I can. And uh, you know, stick around and look for our next uh, repair video to come out. Uh, thanks for watching.